Good day, grade 12. Here with me, I've got question 4 from a past exam paper on functions, specifically exponential functions. Okay. Now, before we answer question 4, let us go through the notes based on exponential functions. Okay. Uh, the question 4, as I've said, is on exponential function, very important. And then you need to know everything regarding or around exponential functions before you can attempt to answer this question. Okay. One thing that you need to know by now is that an exponential function is an inverse function of a logarithmic function. Okay. And also a logarithmic function is the inverse of the exponential function. Okay. Along the y equal to x line. Okay. Now, this is uh, a general equation for exponential functions, okay, where you need to know what is each of the variables D stand for, all right? Then also, one important property about exponential functions is that they have one asymptote, and that asymptote is the horizontal asymptote. So, meaning, the inverse of exponential functions, which is the logarithmic function, will have also one asymptote but it will be the vertical asymptote okay the opposite now the horizontal asymptote of exponential functions is given by y equals to q remember what is an asymptote it's an imaginary line that a function will approach but will never touch across okay because at that particular point x point it is undefined so in this case our exponential function will have the horizontal asymptote which is given by y equals to q, okay? So the q which is there on the general equation. Also, I've already said that the inverse of an exponential function is called the logarithmic function, okay? Where everything becomes the opposite, okay? So whatever that is x on the exponential function becomes y on the logarithmic function. Whatever that is y on the exponential function becomes x on the logarithmic function. Whatever that is the horizontal asymptote for the exponential function with the logarithmic function, it will be the vertical asymptote, okay? Now, from the general equation, we've got variables a, b, t, and q. We need to check what each of those mean. I'm starting with A. So A, all right, if A is positive in that general equation, then it tells you where the function will lie, okay? Either above or below the horizontal asymptote. So if A is positive, then your exponential function lies above, okay, on top of the horizontal asymptote. Very important. Then if your A value is negative, the exponential function will then be below the horizontal asymptote. That is what A does in that equation. It determines where your function will lie, above or below the horizontal asymptote. Now with B, B determines whether um, the function is increasing or decreasing, okay? So remember, when we talk about increasing function, we are just saying, as the x values are getting bigger and bigger, also the y values are getting bigger and bigger. Where we talk about a decreasing function, uh, then we are just saying, as the x values are getting bigger and bigger, the y values are getting smaller and smaller, okay? And I've tried to do it right there with a purple color, okay? And then, I want to give you examples of an increasing function. Say, on my Cartesian plane, I've got a straight line, okay? So as the x values are getting bigger and bigger to the right, what is happening with the y values? They're getting bigger and bigger up along the y, uh, y axis, okay? So that is an increasing function. So what if I'm thinking about a decreasing function, then let's look at this straight line again. As my x values are getting bigger and bigger, what is depending with the y values? The y values are getting smaller and smaller. That is when we have a negative gradient, right? So it will be a decreasing function. And then let us go to 
um, the meaning of B also. We said B, if B is a fraction, okay, a fraction, a number over a number, okay, meaning between 0 to 1, then the exponential function will be a decreasing function, okay. It will look something like this, okay, because as X is increasing, then Y will be decreasing, okay. So that is when B is a fraction. But also, um, I can have something like this, um, where we have we have that. Okay. So as X is increasing, then Y is decreasing. It's getting smaller and smaller. That will also be another type of a decreasing exponential function. So if B is um, is a fraction, then the exponential function will be decreasing. But if B is not a fraction, okay, then meaning if B is bigger than 1 and is not a fraction, then our exponential function will be an increasing function, okay? Let's have an example. So the example will be like this one, okay? So as X is getting bigger and bigger, Y is also getting bigger and bigger. You see that on the function? that will be a type of an increasing function. And I've also made uh, an example using the straight line, okay? Now, that is the function of B. B, if B is uh, not a fraction, then the function will be increasing function. If B is a fraction, it will be a decreasing function, okay? And then also, um, I want us to now look at what is happening here, all right? I've given you an example, which is g of x equals to um, 1 uh, multiplied by 1 over 2 all to the power of x, okay? Usually, when it's 1, that's why I wrote it in red. When it's 1, they usually omit, or we usually omit 1, okay? So, you need to know that there is a 1 in there, okay? That's why I said it's omitted, and it represents a, Okay? So since our value of 1 is A, and it represents where the function will lie, and it's positive in this case, that means our function will lie above the horizontal asymptote. Okay, very, very important. And then also, I want us to look at now the value of B. This is B, you agree with me? So since B is a fraction, okay, that means our function will be a decreasing function. And if they say, give a reason why you say uh, G is a decreasing function, that is because as X values increase, then the Y values are decreasing. Okay, that's the reason. Or if you are saying it will be an increasing function, then it means as X values increase, Y values also increase. Those are reasons that we give, okay? Now, having said that, let us come to this part here. What's a range and what's a domain? A domain, uh, we are just saying these are all possible x values uh, which make the function uh, to exist. Okay, these are all possible x values which are defined for that particular function. Okay, meaning at the asymptotes, the asymptotes are not defined for that function. All right. Also, Range, we're talking about y values. Remember domain? I said all possible x values. But with the range, we are now looking at what? All possible y values, okay? Which are defined for a particular function, okay? All y values that are, uh, uh, are making that particular function to exist, except where the function is undefined. That is what we mean by a domain, and what, that is what we mean by a range, okay? A domain x values range y values that mix uh, that are defined for that particular function okay so here I have tried to give another example okay of a decreasing function so as x values are getting bigger and bigger then the y is getting smaller and smaller as you can see here okay so this will be a decreasing function all right now let us go to the questions. Given the exponential function, okay, and what we notice, the one is omitted in front of the half, 
but we know the one will be a positive. Therefore, we expect our horizontal asymptote, uh, uh, the, the function to be above the horizontal asymptote. Since B is a fraction, the function will be a decreasing function. Okay, so they want us to write down the range of G. Okay, so I think this is the sketch that we are having. How did I know that my horizontal asymptote is zero? Let's go back. I knew that it, it is a zero because there is nothing here. So the value of Q is a zero. Okay, so as a result, that's why on my diagram, I have my dotted line uh, where Y is equal to zero on the X axis. Okay, and then my function then is uh, this one, which is a decreasing function. I've already said that. So that means its range, okay, as asked, its range will be, let us look at that one. Where does the graph start along the, uh, 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 along the Y axis? It starts here where Y is equal to zero and it ends where, remember this graph will continue going up all the way up, up to positive infinity, okay? But remember we cannot include, uh, we can't say the, 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 the function uh, is defined at this position here, okay? Because that's an asymptote. So the graph starts at zero up to positive infinity. That's the range, okay? So we write it like this. We say Y is an element of from zero up to positive infinity. But remember, at zero, Y equals to zero, that's our horizontal asymptote. That's why we are not including it. If it was included, we would use the square brackets. But since it's not included, we use open brackets. Also, infinity, whether positive or negative, is never included. Hence, we use open brackets. Okay. Then, um, there is another notation that we use, this one here. Okay. Which we normally call the set builder notation. So, if you are um, comfortable with this notation here, use it. If you are comfortable with this one here, use it. But these two, they mean one and the same thing. That's why I wrote all, meaning you don't write both. You choose which one is best for you. So y is greater than zero is my range. What am I saying according to the diagram? I'm saying I'm considering all values from zero up to positive infinity up somewhere there, but zero is not included since my function there is undefined, okay? So y greater than zero, I'm saying all values of y which are bigger than zero, but not including zero, okay? Now, next question, 4.2. Determine the equation of, what is this? Very important. G to the power of minus 1. G to the power of minus 1. We call this the inverse. Okay. The inverse of G. So remember, what is the inverse? I said the inverse of an exponential function will be the logarithmic function. Okay. So 4.2. I'm given g of x equals to half to the power of x. Before I find the inverse, I must write that notation g of x as y. That's the rule always. And then I interchange y and x. Where there is x, there is now y. Where there is y, there is now x. Because inverse functions are inverses along the line y equals to x. Hence now, where there was y, there is x. And where there was x, there is now y. Then make y subject of the formula right here, and then apply your law, uh, uh, your logarithmic definition. It will be the log base. What is the base? The base is the same. It's half. So log base half of x. Okay. Log base half of x. That's that is it. But remember, you can't stop here because they said you must write it in the form of G index. Let's say the question. They said write off in the form Y equals to. So it means you can then stop right here. Okay. That will be your answer. But even if you stop here, there is nothing wrong because we are showing you that you know the equation of inverse. Very, very important. So the inverse of an exponential function, the definition is log base, 
of the doing is still the same doing. So you have, and then of x. Okay. Where the exponent, when you are looking for the integers of a log, will be the leading subject. Okay. Very important. Now, 4.3 is the inverse of g. Okay. G inverse of g, a function. That is why the answer. First of all, what do you think? one function and we've got a many to one function so this is how we say it it's x to y okay so x to y the meaning is that if it's one to one it means for every one x value there is one y value and then if it's a many to one function many is x one is y so there is many x values to one y value and that will be a many to one function okay however if then we we look at um let's go back x to y if then we look at one to many meaning one x value to many y values that is not a function we call it a relation okay one to many is not a function it's a relation all right we only have two functions one to one where for every one x value there is one corresponding y value 
or for uh, for many x values there is one corresponding y value those are functions but where we've got one x value to many y values that is a relation not a function okay so since um, our g is a function that makes its inverse to also be a function okay now let's give a reason they said provide a reason i said g is a function it passes the vertical line test you can use that as a reason and therefore using the horizontal line test we've seen that it's a one-to-one -one function okay so for every one x value there is exactly one corresponding y value which then makes the inverse of g to be a function and since this uh, function of g is a one-to-one -one function also its inverse will be a one-to-one -one function so if a function is a many-to-one function its inverse will be a one to many which is not a function but a relation and we'll have to restrict the domain okay well done now let's go to 4.4 the point m a is to two lies on the inverse underline it lies on the inverse meaning when we go to g it will be two is to a but on the inverse is a is to two you get the idea right what is x becomes y what is y becomes x for inverses okay so calculate the value of a so we must use the inverse so it means i'm going to substitute this point on the inverse where a will be x 2 will be y but if i want to substitute it on g then i must first find the inverse of that point which will be m prime and it will be 2 is to a you see that then I can substitute on G. Now, finding A, 4.4.1, this is how I've done it. Method number one, I'm substituting that given point as it is on the inverse. But I can also substitute that point where I interchange. Look at that. I've interchanged where there was A, there's 2. Where there's 2, there's now A. Then I will substitute this on G because... Uh, G inverse and G are inverses of each other, right? Now, with method number one, substituting M as it is given on the inverse, um, this represents X, this represents Y. So, this will be 2 log base half of, remember X is A, okay? I'm taking this from the inverse. Remember the inverse, we found it, and we found it right here, you remember? Okay, right here this was the inverse this was our inverse okay so where there is y i put uh, a 2 where there is x i put an a okay don't be confused now having said that this is how i found the a i've said then since i'm dealing with a log i can move to exponential remember exponential it will be base raised to the power x right so this will be half raised to the power of 2, all equals to a. And therefore, my a is a 1 over 4. But if I'm using g, then I need to first fix m and substitute. Remember, this will be m prime, which is the inverse of m, right? That, so coordinates of m was a is to 2, but we know now what is a. What is a? It's 1 over 4. So for m, it's 1 over 4 is to 2. Therefore, for the m prime or the m inverse, it will be 2 is to 1 over 4. Okay, well done. Now let us go to 4.5. If h of x is equal to g 
at x plus 3 plus 2, write down the coordinates of the image of the inverse of m. You see that? On h. So now they want you to give the new coordinates of the inverse of m on h. Okay. So what are we going to do? We need to first find the equation of h. That is what I've done. So I'm first finding um, the, the, the inverse. But even if you didn't find the inverse of uh, the, 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 the equation of h, you can do it in a simpler way, okay? What do we know? We know that h of x is actually, uh, uh, there's a shift there on g. Where there is x now, you can go to g and put x plus 3, and then on the y values, put a plus 2, okay? So therefore, your h will be a 1 over 2, all to the power of x plus 3, plus 2. Okay, that will be h. So, if I'm looking for the coordinates of the m prime on h, what does it mean? It means then, following from what I have here already, following from what I have here already, which is my 2 is to 1 over 4, that's where I'm going to make the changes. Okay, so x plus 3, remember x plus 3 equals to 0, is the same as x equals to minus 3. You agree with me? So it means the shifting is 3 units to the left. So I'm going to subtract a minus 3 where there was a 2. Okay? That's what I'm going to do. So it's going to be 2 minus the 3. Okay? And then on the 1 over 4, I'm going to say plus 2. Okay? Because that is what was given. So now as a result, 2 minus 3 is a minus 1. And then 1 over 4 plus 2, it's a 9 over 4. All right? I'm just using my uh, transfer, transformation and translation uh, knowledge. Now, well done. I hope you are going to go through uh, these examples and other examples from past exam questions so that you can deepen your understanding. Please also watch the other videos on revision on functions. Thank you.